These are yellow crazy ants, one of the most invasive animals in the world. They're famous for wiping out entire ecosystems and pushed many species to the brink of extinction. I've got a tiny colony of them. A few months ago, I collected the queen and now they're a thriving empire. They may look small now, but the dangerous thing about the species is that they grow so fast. Fast forward about a month to the present day, and they're now occupying two test tubes. These guys want one mission, and that's to grow. If that's what they want, we'll give it to them. So in this video, we'll not only keep this dangerous species as pets, but we're going to build them their dream home and see how they react to weather events and live prey. Our first mission is to build them a new home, but to do that we have to look at their existing living conditions now. They're in an enclosure that's too small, it's way too dry for the species, and it's not even natural. I want to build them a home that simulates their natural environment with unlimited food and even weather events. Let's start by taking a look inside this package that Aesthetic Ants was kind enough to send us. It has everything we need, starting with this large acrylic tank, which came flat packed, so we have to build it using this. These ants live in tropical areas in the wild, so I'm going to build a tropical beach in the enclosure. To start this, I'm going to cover the floor in these rocks and pieces of driftwood. And there we go. You might think this looks ugly, uh, because it is. So to fix that, I'm going to add the one thing tropical beaches are famous for. Sand. And with that, their outworld is complete and we can move on to their nest. Remember, these ants are from tropical rainforest, so their nest has to be really wet. To achieve this, I'm just going to take this tiny water dropper and just fill it up in here. This is to make sure the eggs and larvae don't dehydrate and die. To make sure the ants don't escape, I'm putting this slippery flue and stuff along the inside of the lid so the ants couldn't grip on even if they wanted to. There's just one more thing I have to add before we introduce the ants to their new home. Remember how I said before there are a tropical species? Well, in tropical ecosystems, it rains a lot. So I'm going to use this spray bottle filled with water to simulate a rainstorm. Well, I'd say this is pretty good for the dream home, and now it's time to surprise the yellow crazy ants. Remember, I built all of this stuff just for the ant colony, so I want to see how they react once I let them in. But before adding the ant colony in, I figured I should probably give it a name so I could stop referring to it just as the ant colony. And since they're so dangerous and menacing with the formic acid and aggressive swarming behavior, we need an equally menacing name to match. So, everyone, please say hello to the lemon drops. You know, the small candy you eat when you have a sore throat. Anyway, I put the test tubes in the new nest, but there were still some workers left behind, so I just used this piece of cotton to pick them up and dump them in the outworld with the rest of the colony. Eventually, the lemon drops were reunited in their dream home, and they absolutely loved it. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if they actually loved it, but they probably did because they were doing a lot of exploring. But we don't want them to just explore, we want them to move out of these test tubes and into this new nest. And luckily, it didn't take very long for a few different workers to all go in and check it out. Eventually, every ant knew about the new nest, and here you can see one of the workers telling its friends about it using its longer tenors. And while some grab the remaining cocoons to move, others, like these workers, escort the queen. Or at least try to, because it took the queen about 30 minutes to build up enough courage to make the move. I decided to leave on the red acrylic screen while they're adjusting, because in case you didn't know, some ants can't see the color red, so this nest will be completely dark. For ants at least, because we can still have a peek and see how active the ants are inside the new nest. Finally, with the help of her workers, the queen left her test tube and quickly ran to the new nest. The reason she goes so quickly is so predators don't have enough time to catch her. Despite how dangerous the species is, they actually seem pretty scared. Anyways, now most of the colony's moved in, I can finally take out one of the test tubes. And in this video, you can see just how moldy it was before. Yeah, I'm not surprised they decided to move out. Anyway, I decided to leave the lemon drops be for two days so they could adjust to their new home. And now the colony's gotten used to their new home, it's time for the fun part. I'm going to test the yellow crazy ant swarming behavior to see if they can take down prey bigger than themselves. I'm going to put a grasshopper in, so without wasting any more time, I put the cricket in, and it didn't take very long until the grasshopper crossed paths with the ant. After realizing it was food, the worker lunged at it. This first attack may have looked ineffective, and that's because it is. Their main tactic is to swarm their prey, and that's exactly what you can see them doing here. They kept on biting and pulling at it until it eventually died. Yes, it may look brutal, but the colony had now success successfully made their first big kill. And in this time lapse, you can see them pulling it towards the nest to store its food for later. Anyway, over the next few days, I continued to monitor the colony to make sure the brood was growing fine, and I even gave them this red-colored honey. 
This caused all the workers in the colony and even some of the brood to have this red color on them. Yeah, I found that pretty funny. Since the colony reacted so well to their first big prey item, I decided it was time for another one. After all, they had all this larvae and they needed something to feed them. So say hello to this juicy roach. As the ants patrolled the sand in the outworld, the roach hid in the rocks. If it stayed completely still, the ants might not be able to find it. But the roach's peace did not last long. One of the workers found it and it was immediately swarmed by the rest of the colony. They latched onto its legs, antennas and even its mandibles. Over the next few days, the lemon drops processed the roach, providing further sustenance for their ever-growing brood pile. And here you can even see the larvae spinning their own cocoons. Over the last few months, the colony has truly become an empire. And with that, the ants have successfully completed every challenge and we even gave them a new home. So, should I keep updating you guys on this species or should I do the same challenge with a different one? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe so you don't miss all future videos. Thank you so much for watching.